wanted to share some of my key takeaways um, from Bill's work. He definitely has a preparation focus. Movement is medicine and really earning the right for progression, but ultimately trying to prepare the athlete to be, <clears throat> if, if not at a minimum, the, how they were physically uh, from an athletic point of view prior to injury. And if ideally being able to actually increase their capacity as an athlete, not just from the injury point of view, but also as their general capacity, physical capacity as an athlete. And uh, it was a analogy that he brought uh, and referenced throughout his whole presentation for the day where are we really preparing the athlete to be, if they're a Formula One, um, are they a Formula One at the end of your preparation or are they simply, for example, you know, a Porsche, which is a good car, but it's not quite the power athlete or the capacity that a Formula One engine and car has. Respecting injuries are neurophysiological. Um, and the way that he had that, he had a good uh, visual for that, where he called it the dimmer switch. So typically when, especially if it's been a really significant injury and the, he, he didn't, and Bill didn't deal with the phase one approach after the surgery. And let's say a knee was, was stuck in a brace for a long period of time. He could see that the, the ability to be able to recruit muscle mass you know, during knee extension, for example, with the quads was diminished uh, and therefore the dimmer lights was right down opposed to someone with a full healthy knee, there'd be the dimmer is right up full, full lights. They've got full activation and normal function of that quad. And that, and that feeds into his general philosophy. If anyone's seen his work, which I recommend YouTubing Bill's work, you can see how dynamic it is. And there's a lot of motor learning involved in his drills, particularly in early stage. And that's for that neural um, response that he's trying to get. So being able to teach those movement patterns, challenging the nervous system with complex movements um, was another one and, and making sure that you're not just looking at from purely an injury point of view, but you're looking at the whole athlete was another big takeaway. So highly recommend if you're interested in working in Bill's work, um, make sure to um, check out when he's next in Australia uh, or for those listening overseas and the lucky to live in America, make sure to check out Bill and uh, he does have some presentations on YouTube that you can watch that go up to 40 minutes. In terms of power tip for this week, practice your running drills to increase your sprinting and change direction efficiency. I would recommend doing that before every running session. So then when you're in a group setting, you know how to switch, you know about ankle stiffness, you know about hip lock, you know about your trunk stability. <clears throat> so when you're in going into this Christmas period over three weeks, we got some time off next week make sure you really hone in on either running with a truck and field athlete or um, running or just you know following some drills that you can work on those key areas which is ankle stiffness so you've got you know, if we're using the car analogy you've got full tires there's no point having a ferrari engine with flat tires you're not going to go anywhere quick as we know acceleration and deceleration are really important on the field and you need ankle stiffness for those qualities Number two, hip lock. There's, if your pelvis is moving all over the place while you're sprinting, you, either, you can put yourself at risk of injury. And in terms of what I wish I knew 10 years ago, it's a good segue. We're going to keep this theme nice and consistent this week. It's the effectiveness of track and field drilling for speed efficiency. Um, so that's something I wish I knew 10 years ago or I respected more 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I was more focused on the um, physical capacity. So i.e., improving your max strength, how heavy you can lift or improving how fast you can run your 20 meter time or improving your 2K time trial. So just the capacities. I'm now much more valuing the, how you produce those drills uh, and less is more. So the execution of myself, the coach being able to filter what's a really good drill for that athlete how can we progressively make it more challenging to challenge them not only physically, but also their nervous system as well. Um, so that motor learning is going on. And then ultimately, how can we transfer that to on-field football performance? 